fucking tall. We always want tall, but Jet, the greatest. So I have been challenged by what would be the right musical to take on. And I could never forget my childhood. I was 10 years old when I first listened to the West Side Story album, and it never went away. To have been able to fulfill that dream and keep that promise that I made to myself, you must make West Side Story. Divisions between unlike-minded people is as old as time itself. And the divisions between the Sharks and the Jets in 1957, which inspired musical, were profound, but not as divided as we find ourselves today. It turned out in the middle of the development of the script, which took five years, things widened, which I think in a sense, sadly, made the story of those racial divides, not just territorial divides. Kill the lights more relevant to today's audience than perhaps it even was in 1957. It's such a profound story. It speaks to every generation. I'm not Puerto Rican. Is that okay? That I'm not? I don't know. It's just that love bridges every divide. It's timeless in the sense that we'd be reminded of that story as often as possible. This is a tradition on all of our movies where we toast the first shot and we toast the last shot. And I just want to say that we have been actually in production on this for months. The choreography, the dance rehearsals, the music. We've all been doing this with Gustavo Dudamel and David Newman conducting the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. Janine Tesori's work, getting everybody primed and ready to sing these great songs as great as anybody has ever sung them. But now to actually bring all those elements together as one voice into an ensemble. This is a very relevant story. To the times we now live in. I'm just so proud and honored that I got this shot late in my career. <laughs> of being able to tell this story directly based on the 1957 Broadway musical. Go! Skyscrapers bloom in America, Cadillacs zoom in America, industry booming I'm so proud to be here. Amazing! I sleep as good as you pay. Yeah? Look it. <gasps> oh. I wish I could say it was my idea. It was Tony Kutcher's husband, Mark Harris's idea, to change the character of Doc into his widow and have his widow be Puerto Rican and have her be Rita Moreno. You make fun of the way I talk one more time, Blondie. She did West Side Story in 1961, and I didn't think or know if she would want to be in West Side Story twice, but we brought her the offer, and she read the script and adored Tony's screenplay. It was just a natural fit. Keep looking for better, mi milagro. The fact that she's been able to capture and hold onto her youth. Ready. She danced with the Sharks and the Jets during rehearsal. She came in every week and talked to us about what it was like growing up as a Puerto Rican in America. She brought so many interesting stories and she so motivated the cast. And I thought that she really needed to be the executive producer. She needed to serve a, more of a managerial role, not just to come in as an actor, but to really help us frame the messages that West Side Story needs to extend to people who see it. And she's been very, very causal in all of that. We gave her this song somewhere, and she does it wonderfully. And she did it with a cold. But it was so authentic, I didn't want her to come back into a recording studio and change it, because she did somewhere live that day we shot the sequence. For Bernardo, I wanted somebody that could be a street leader and was not just going to, to command based on his appearance, but was going to command based on his gravitas. <laughs> David Alvarez came in, and he was a wonderful actor. Está bien? Sí. The first gringo boy who smiles at you. 
I think what convinced me more than anything else was not so much the dancing and the singing, it's when he read for the part. I don't want you to marry a gringo. You keep away from him. I am not interested in what you have to say. He earned the role because of his acting. I'm glad to meet you. What were you doing under there with my sister? He he said, thank you, Mr. Spielberg. And I said, call me Steven, because I'm going to start calling you Bernardo from this moment forward. That's how I knew he got the part. And I just kept looking and looking and looking. And she was the bar that no one reached. No one could reach as high as Rachel reached that first day. I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. I cast Rachel when she was 17. She was a senior in high school when she got the part. A committee should be organized to honor. And I could not believe that somebody who could sing as well as that. And who looked the part of Maria. How could I be so lucky to find her on my first day of casting? You should know better. You were in love. Everything that Rachel sings comes from in here. You should know better. I was actually considering delaying the movie to get Mike Feist to be in it. I saw him dance before he read for the part. And his dancing was off the charts. The way he could extend his body was just extraordinary. Mike is a soulful, Who are you? deep thinker, Wonderful. a deep feeler as a human being and as an actor. You see us coming, and we will keep coming. You sharks make like the rats in Skadet. But it's when he read the part of Riff. What are you afraid of? Your pull off Can't you break breaking my heart? That I knew that I wanted to cast him. Just play it cool, boy. Real cool. He just reached for the stars. Ariana, I didn't know. She just came in. She was one of thousands of people that came in and one of hundreds of of Anita possibilities who came in to meet with me. She came into audition. She was a great dancer. The first thing I noticed about her was her dancing. But I didn't know about acting and I didn't know about singing. And so like everyone else, she had to come in for a dancing audition, then for a singing audition, then for a reading audition. Do you want to start World War III? And I saw somebody who had tremendous personal charisma. Everyone there will give big cheer. Everyone there would have moved here. Her personal charisma, it was alive and vivid in the room. And I kept thinking, once I get her on video during these rehearsals, I bet she doubles down on that. Now you sound like a real American. (laughs) And it's exactly what happened. She actually quadrupled down on what I felt was very magnetic in the room. And it just blossomed on the screen. And then eventually I just said, she's Anita. (laughs) Oh, hi. Don't mess up my hair. I just got it to act right. I had met Ansel a couple of times, and he sort of stuck in my mind, but I had no idea he was a singer. Boy, boy, crazy boy, get cool, boy. I knew in Baby Driver, he moved really well. And I thought he had a lot of personal charisma, especially on-screen charisma. That's a movie star. But I didn't know if he could sing or dance, and I just asked him to come in to audition. And he did, and the first day he came to audition, he was ill. It's funny, I wasn't planning on showing up tonight. And he didn't cancel the audition, he just went for it. Yet his voice was too high for the register of Tony. Once I found out that he had been ill and didn't tell anybody he was under the weather, I had him come back in five days later and retest, and he got the part during the retest. He just caught me by surprise as all. Well. He's just phenomenal in this, and just lovely to work with. Maria, say it loud and there's music playing. Say it soft and it's almost like praying.